Hello there. Well, we've got a very cold day. It's, it's, it's absolutely freezing. It's about minus one or minus two. What am I doing here? <laughs> I think I'm going to get this video up and running with a, a reading. Which almost sounds a bit religious, but it's not. It's, it's a reading from my old blue guy to Scotland. Uh, otherwise known as Muirhead, Scotland. This is the third edition dating to 1949. So here we go. To the west of Leith is New Haven, a fishing port noted for its fish dinners and for the conservative peculiarities of its fishing population which is of Dutch or Danish origin. The New Haven fishers seldom marry outside their own ranks. The men are distinguished for hardy daring and the women for their physical strength, testified by the heavy loads of fish they bear in their creels. Clad in a peculiar costume of many heavy petticoats, New Haven fishwives are still to be seen in the streets of Edinburgh hawking their fish. Welcome to New Haven. came into existence in the early 16th century when a dockyard was created for King James IV. There was probably already a fishing village at the location, but the addition of the Royal Dockyard meant an increase in population and prosperity. It is perhaps not clear if the fishing village was already made up of immigrants perhaps folk from the Netherlands who settled in Scotland in a number of waves, or whether the Royal Dock itself brought fresh faces from far-off lands. But there is no doubt that the people of New Haven were very different to those in neighbouring Leith and Edinburgh. The costume of the wives of the fishermen, the fishwives, was different. It was colourful, extravagant in style, and unlike costume anywhere else in Scotland. There is no doubt that it was this, along with the large number of buildings in the village that had external stairs, or four stairs, that marked New Haven out as a village of some significance. Well, one of the things about being by a large stretch of water is you've got a lot of seagulls. Sometimes they make an awful lot of noise. Um, the fishwives of New Haven were a, a fit bunch of women. Very fit. And I don't know whether it was their, their diet of fish, but they, quite a large proportion of them were also very beautiful. And that beauty and hardiness combined with the quite unique costumes that they wore on occasions um, meant that the village was pretty much a magnet for uh, photographers throughout time. I mean, in the very early days of photography, you had uh, guys coming down here. I think that some of the early, I think the earliest photographs of New Haven date to 1846 photographs of these women and, and th their husbands, the fishermen. I think New Haven, like a lot of places, has um, 
seen many changes over the centuries. As I think I've probably said in my, uh, an opening voiceover that the village grew in the very early 16th century because King James IV um, created or instigated a, a royal dock here. There was probably a fishing village here before that. Then the royal dock appeared and one of the first ships, I, th I think it was the first ship that was launched, was the, uh, what was it, I forgot what it was called, the Great Something or Other Bugger, I'll put the name, of the, the name of that boat at the bottom of the screen. How could I forget such a thing? It was the largest uh, battleship in the, in the early 16th century. Um, and so, you know, in addition to fishing, you had shipbuilding here, and that meant there was going to be a sizable community in the village, a fair number of people. I think the last ship launched was in 1928, and it was called the Reliance. Um, and I think round about then the village started to see a decline. Some of the houses were starting to get a bit uh, worn around the edges. Uh, indeed, at that stage, I think some of the housing could probably be called slums. But they were clean inside. The women kept them clean and did their best. And I think the, the costumes that the women wore, as I say, they didn't wear them all the time. I think on special occasions, maybe it was their Sunday best. They would have worn them when they were doing things like singing in their, in their choir. Um, and I think they would also have worn them when they were um, hawking their fish around the doors of Edinburgh and other places, Fife, etc. As I say, very fit, hardy women. They would carry huge loads of fish in their creels and go round doors uh, selling them. But um, that decline that happened around about the first quarter of the 20th century, sort of, yeah, things just got worse until around about the middle of the 20th century, Edinburgh Council thought they better do something here. We've got a village that's just full of slums. Some of them didn't have hot, cold water even. So they tried to figure out what to do. One town planner, sometimes we blame town planners for things. One town planner suggested, no, we keep the whole village, all the buildings, all the streets. We just kind of do something with that. Maybe knock some of the houses together to make bigger properties uh, with more um, up-to-date facilities. But no, Edinburgh Council, I don't know whether it was money or whatever the reason, they decided not, we're going to demolish that a good proportion of the village. The village is actually very lucky to have survived. Whole streets were swept away. Um, behind me, this is Main Street, the main street in the village, and it's, I think you can see on the right-hand side, these were some of the structures that were built, housing in the 1960s and 70s, and they're pretty um, unsympathetic to the character of the village. Um, on the north side of the main street, most of the houses have probably been retained and that allows a bit of the village's character to, to, to remain. Um, and while it's easy to slag off a lot of this, the houses on the south side of the main street, for example, it, it, because they're south facing, they've got a balcony on, their, on, on the other side of them, so that for people living in them, they would have been comfortable and a awful lot more comfortable than the housing that was there before. But nevertheless, in building them, <coughs> excuse me, it did destroy a, quite a bit of the village and, and its character. Nevertheless, all that said, New Haven has managed to retain a, a feeling that it's, it, it's a different. It just feels like a different place to nearby Leith and Edinburgh. It can a unique place in the same way that perhaps Dean Village is. And you, you know how it's managed to do that given all the modern 1960s and 70s stuff that was built. I'm not entirely sure, but it has. Running off the main street on the northern side, you've got little lanes that run down in the direction of the water. And 
what we're going to do today is um, I, I'm just going to have a wander around, maybe down some of the lanes. We'll try and see if we can find some of the original old bits of New Haven things that might have uh, escaped the uh, Edinburgh City Council's draconian measures. Um, this kind of curving building, for example, right at the the west end of the main street used to be the Marine Hotel and you can see it in a number of old town plans I think back to the middle of the 19th century so we'll have a look at some old maps and plans and things and uh, see if we can find uh, what's left of old New Haven In actual fact the extent of demolition of properties in New Haven has been more extensive than I initially realised. While buildings like that lovely curving structure that was once the Berean Hotel have survived, in fact most of the old buildings on the north side of the main street have gone. And unlike the south side which saw the construction of housing that was unsympathetic to the feel of the village, Many on the north side were totally demolished, then rebuilt, in a similar style to those they replaced. A few escaped demolition, but were gutted, then totally renovated. Very few of the buildings that you can see in the main street today are older than the 1960s or 70s. But at least the north side has some character and feels old. For example, here's the main street around 1890. We're looking east and St Andrew's Square, now called Fish Market Square, is on the far left. You can see that at the corner of the square and main street we have a tall tenement that is probably more recent than the cottages lining the street. A closer photo dating to 1892 shows those cottages on the right of that tall tenement. Now, I'm going to start numbering stairs here, so pay attention. There's stair one, and stair two. Stair one being attached to a taller and more easily recognised building. In this later photo dating to the 1920s, you can see what I have termed stair one and stair two. But more importantly, you can see that everything to the left of stair two has been demolished and replaced with a tall tenement with a shop at ground level. You can see the extent of that tall tenement more clearly in another photo taken from the other end of Main Street. Stairs 1 and 2 are hidden behind the tram. The pub on the far right was the King's Arms, so named from at least the mid-19th century. While sitting at the counter of the Harbour Inn after filming, I was shown a book of photos dating to around the 1960s or 70s, and one showed the King's Arms, with those cottages on its immediate left completely demolished. So all is not quite how it appears on the north side of New Haven's Main Street today. Well, this is Fish Market Square, just off the main street, just a bit St Andrew's Square, and um, just behind the camera you've got the Harbour Inn, it used to be the Stone Pier Inn, and just over there used to be the, um, the Stone Pier Inn, have I got this right? Now the hardware, hold on, no, hold on, I'm getting mixed up. Sorry, the new ship hotel. Um, and, it, it, you know, sometimes when you get 
old buildings with a, a modern covering of uh, a stone coating or hardling. It can be difficult telling whether, <coughs> excuse me, telling whether the, these are the original old buildings or whether they're just some sort of modern creation covered in hardling. But I know that these are the original old buildings because there is a photograph taken from just over there and I think towards the end of the 19th century. And I can tell it's the same building simply by the, the placement or the position of the windows, the spacing between the windows and such like. And I'm actually certain it's the same building. And the, the door of the inn was just where the door is now. And that photograph shows it a model of a, an old sailing ship above the, the entrance. Quite special. I wonder, wonder what became of that model ship. But I think we should maybe take a closer look at that photograph because there's a lot of stuff going on in it, a lot of stuff that's of some interest. In actual fact, the building behind me was called the New Ship Hotel in an 1852 town plan. In a later plan dating to 1876, it was named the Old Ship Hotel and by 1894 it had become the Old Ship Inn. But the interest in this photo dating to the late 1890s is not just that it shows the Old Ship Inn. It also shows the model of a sailing ship above the entrance. We can also see the Stone Pier Inn, now the Harbour Inn, with some sort of painted sign on its corner, perhaps depicting that old pier. We can also see the stone well at the top of the square, by Main Street, and what may be a funeral director's on the south side of Main Street. We can also see a public urinal on the far left, along with a policeman and groups of sailors hanging around. What a great photo! Earlier on I mentioned that one of the facets of New Haven that marked it out as somewhere a bit special or unusual was the large number of external stairs, or four stairs. Four stairs probably initially appeared on defended buildings back in the medieval period. It was much harder to break down a door if you were standing on a small platform at the top of a flight of stairs and not at ground level. But I suppose putting your stairs outside also gave you more space inside. They were fairly common at one time, often seen on two-storey cottages like those seen in New Haven, but there is no doubt that there are far more of them that you would normally expect to see. In this town plan dating to 1852, you can see all the four stairs along the main street, between the King's Arms and St Andrew's Square, and in the narrow closes to the left of the square. This 1890s photo of the junction of St Andrew's Square and Main Street is of some interest. In addition to a group of small boys, it shows the stone draw well and a drinking fountain. The draw well construction looks remarkably similar, indeed identical, to the old stone lighthouse on the pier. Why this should be, I'm not entirely sure, unless the village used a stonemason who could only make things in one particular shape. That black and white Tudor style building on the main street used to be the King's Arms Inn from at least the middle of the 19th century. And you can recognise it in old photographs and it's, it's always good when you have a, a building that has, has a peculiar and uh, standout sort of shape because you can 
use it to get a handle on where everything else used to be because there's not a great deal uh, left. Uh, having said that, around about that particular building, there is, I think that's a, a core of where the uh, much of uh, what used to be there is still there, building wise. Um, this, behind me, this is New Lane. Um, and there are some interesting photographs showing this lane. Um, it used to run downhill towards the the edge of the water at the Firth of Forth. As you can see uh, behind me, that's no longer the case. And I'll show you a comparison image just now. It's from... Um, on the left hand side you'll see an old map and on the right hand side you'll see a street layout today and I think you can probably instantly see well you can see where New Lane is on both of these images and you can instantly see that there's been a huge amount of ran, uh, land reclamation taking place uh, to what was once water is now land with these um, sort of multi-storey flats and, and such like And uh, this uh, uh, new lane is um, nothing like what it used to be, as you'll see in the photographs that follow. And this is all modern. You would never know that this was once part of an old village. Um, so let, let's have a close look at these photographs. And uh, after that, I think what we'll do is we'll end this video in a pub. Because if I don't get inside, I'm going to get pneumonia. Uh, pneumonia. I can't even say it, pneumonia or something. <laughs> anyway, here's the old photographs. Even if this beer was served in a frozen glass, it would still heat me up. I am frozen to the bone. The very bone. It's, 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 it's still about minus one out there. Desperately trying to remember if I'd covered everything I wanted to talk about. At the end of the day, I can rely quite a bit on voiceovers when I get back home, if I've missed stuff out. But the cold was just, it was just getting to my, my brain. I was, I couldn't even remember the, remember the name of the great Michael. That's how bad it was. So, uh, the pub I'm in just now is the, let me get this right, it's the Harper Inn in Fish Market Square, and as I said earlier, this used to be St Andrew Square, and this pub used to be the Stone Pier Inn. 
And as I think we also saw earlier, it, you can see this pub in one of the photographs, one of the, dating to, I think it's dates to about 1890, showing St Andrew Square and uh, th that, uh, that side of this particular establishment. Cracking photo, there are quite a few good, really good photos amongst some of these. As I've said previously, it used, uh, often it's the people that make the photographs great, but I think on this occasion there's been a few where the buildings have uh, been great as well. Because New Market's a really wonderful place. I think for people who just kind of wander around and aren't really paying a great deal of attention, you could probably walk through it and not pay it much notice. You could even miss it. More so with the, the south side of the main street being full of that modern and quite bland looking uh, 60s or 70s housing. But, uh, you know, I, I, I like wandering around. I come through to Edinburgh, I, wa I wander around. I might wander down to Leith and wander there. Now, I like wandering here in New Haven. It's just got a nice feel to it. As, as I said earlier, it's, it's got a kind of special feel in the, perhaps the same way that Dean Village has. I don't think it's just as uh, architecturally scenic as Dean Village, but it, it definitely has something that's worth a visit. And that's a lovely beer. Beautiful. If you're ever through in Edinburgh and you're maybe heading down to have a look at the Leith area, pop along to New Haven. It's just a, a nice place to hang around for a while and to seek out the old little bits of wall and the old things that are left in the village. And to think of the old days when these beautiful women clad in these wonderful, colourful costumes roamed the streets of Edinburgh and Fife and probably other areas of Scotland with their heavy creels of fish. And of course we can't forget about their husbands who caught the fish. <laughs> yeah. The good old days. I'm Eddie Burns. Take care.